Hello and welcome to the first video in our intro to Onshape series. We'll take a look at navigating the menus, creating your first document, and getting started on your first part. Let's get right into it. Open up a browser and navigate to onshape.com. Once you get there, in the top right corner, you'll see a sign in button. If you haven't already created an account, click on the sign in button and select the sign up for an account. If you've already created an account, you can sign in and we'll meet at the main screen. Here we are in Onshape's main screen. We can see all of the different files and folders that I have available. If I select one of the files by right clicking, I can see more details about it over here on the right. Over on the left, you can see different navigation options as well. I'll take a look inside of the lessons folder. And as you can see, there are no documents or folders inside. So I'll create my first document in here. And we'll call this block. And I'll click create public document. Here we are in the part studio. And at the very bottom, we can see that there is an assembly. We'll talk about that in another video. Along the left side of the part studio, we can see that there are different features that are available as I include them in my, my drawings. Also a parts list as I create parts. So we'll begin by creating our block and I'll do that by clicking on the sketch. And I'm going to select a plane to start my sketch. Now I'll select this top plane and you can see that the sketch is overlaid on top of that top plane. And I can take a look around this plane by using my arrow keys. I have the left arrow keys and the right arrow keys. And I can change the view as I go through these sketches. Uh, I can press the up and down arrow keys, but I can also use this little block icon on the right side. So as I turn this, I can use these little arrows up and down. I can also tilt them left and right, but this is pretty handy. So if I'm doing a sketch and I'm focusing on just the top plane, so I can select the top face of this cube and it'll show me just the top plane. The other faces are still there. You can see there's the right plane and the front plane, but I can quickly navigate between these different planes. So for example, if I wanna go over to the right plane, then I can just press the right if I wanted to look at the top, front, and right corners, I can hover my mouse over that and click on this part of the box. If I want to go to the other side, so for example, if I'm in the top view and I want to take a look at the bottom view, I can select this part of the box, which is the outline, and it'll flip me around to the bottom. I can press that again and it'll flip me back over to the top. Before I get started on my first sketch, I'm actually going to make a change to my preferences. I'm going to change the default units from inches into millimeters. So up here in the top right corner, I'm going to click on my name and I'm going to click on my account and select the preferences. And down here under units, I'm going to change the length units from inches into millimeters. And this is very helpful because I do 3D printing and the 3D printing software likes to use uh, millimeters instead of inches. Once I finish that, I'm going to return to document and reload the workspace. I'll go back into the sketch and you can see that the sketch plane appears once again. I'll click on the top view and we're back where we started. So now that we're on our top plane, you can see that I'm working on my sketch one. I'm going to create a rectangle and up here in the top corner, I can see the corner rectangle tool. I don't want to create a corner rectangle where I would draw the corners of the rectangles from start to finish. I don't want to do that. Instead, I want to use this drop down arrow and I want to create a center point rectangle. And you'll see these different drop down arrows throughout uh, these tools. You can see it along the circle, along the arc tool, and along these uh, polygon tools, and so on. So you can explore those different options, but for now we'll use the drop down arrow and select the center point rectangle. As I move my mouse over to my sketch area, I can see that the origin is highlighted. I can also go over here and you can see that there is a dashed line that appears and we are waking up this origin point. And this allows us to quickly add a constraint to our drawing. So if I want a horizontal constraint that's attached to the origin, uh, it'll show up there. 
I'll click on the center point rectangle and create my first rectangle. Click and drag from the origin to just a random point out here. And we're going to resize this to 16. So now this will default to 16 millimeters. And I'm going to change this one also to 16 millimeters. And what if I didn't get to dimension one of those? Well, you can see that one of the lines turn blue and the other stay black. When the line or the dot is blue, that means that those dimensions can be changed. So for example, I can make this as long as I want, but I can't change the width on these two uh, lines because I've already dimensioned them to 16 millimeters. But this has no constraint on it, so I can resize this as much as I want to. If I forget to dimension one of those, or if I want to add a dimension, I can go up here into the Dimension button, and I'll select one of the sides. You can see that the dimension outline starts to come out, but I can also dimension it to something else. So for example, if I want to dimension it to this line up here, then it'll switch over to an angle, and I can dimension that to a 90 degree angle. I can also go up here if I want to redraw that dimension up here, but it'll also figure out if I'm doing it from way out here, it'll dimension all the way outside of those lines, so 270 or 90 degrees. And I'm going to dimension the side of my shape to match the other one, so 16 millimeters. So we created our first sketch, but we still don't have a part, and that's because our shape is still flat, and so I'm going to press escape to exit out of any tools that I'm on. I'm going to select the inside of this square. And I'm going to press the extrude button. And at first it doesn't look like anything changed, but if I change the view, you can see that there is a depth to it now. And we can change the depth by clicking on this. And we're going to change this depth to 9.6 millimeters. And once again, it'll default to millimeters. And I'll press enter one more time to lock that in. Now Onshape automatically saves anything that you do. When you're creating sketches, it'll wait until you've finished all of the sketch and then it will save. So I highly recommend if you're doing a lot of uh, complicated work, go ahead and uh, lock in your sketch by clicking the green arrow. and then it'll save all of those, but it'll save each of these features as you create them. Once we have our first extrude, we'll create our four cylinders that will go on the top of this cube. I'll click the sketch button and I'll select the top face. You can see that the new sketch plane that I made is off of the top plane. It is attached to that face of the cube that we extruded. I'll click on the top once again to change my view, and I'll zoom in a little bit so I can see. And I'll create four center point circles. I'll just do them randomly for now. And they don't have to be any particular size, as long as they're fitting inside and we'll properly dimension these. So the circles that I want to make, I want them to be 4.8 millimeters in diameter. Press escape. Now all of these circles are different sizes and we can fix that by using a constraint and we'll set them equal to each other. I'll select my first one and I'll select another circle and that one resizes to fit the one that is constrained. And I can do that to the rest of these. What I like to do is I actually like to select the one that has the constraint on it, even though I know that this is equal to this one. Uh, I still would like this one equal to this one, just because in case I make any changes to the other circles, I know that the one that I dimensioned is, uh, it has the dimension to it. So I'll click on this last one and I'll properly dimension that so that they're equal. That takes care of the sizes for the circle, but they're still not positioned properly. And we'll add our dimension. We'll make the centers four millimeters away 
from the sides, so four millimeters. And we'll make this one four millimeters as well. Now I can dimension all of these uh, four millimeters away from each of the sides, and I'll have a lot of different uh, dimensions visible on the screen. But instead of doing that, what we can do is we can choose the symmetric option. This is great if we know that the things are symmetrical to an, a line, which this cube is. I'll select this uh, center point for this circle. I'll select the center point for the other circle that I want symmetrical, and I'll select a line of symmetry. I'll do the same thing with the rest of these. As long as I have two points and a line selected, it'll make it symmetrical along those lines. And then this last one, I'll just choose one of them to be symmetrical. And there we go. All right, that takes care of our four circles. I'm going to press Escape, and I'm going to select the insides of these circles and we'll extrude those. And we'll make these 1.6 millimeters. I'll press enter and lock that in. I can switch to my corner view and there we have it. Here is our the beginning of our block. In the next lesson, we'll finish our design by removing areas from our part. Until then, have a great day and I'll see you next time.